I am Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leathercraft, and we're going to have a good time making a simple pair of lace-up leggings. Now, this is going to feel like it's aimed a little bit more towards our costume friends, and it is, but at the same time, do we like to hunt, hike, camp, or do we simply like the look of a knee-high boot? This is an affordable alternative. Now, affordable, keyword here. When we step over to our costume friends, we have got to have a pair of boots that looks good, durable, comfortable, and affordable. With these, we knock out every one of those. We can always buy a pair of boots, period boots, that fit our foot like a glove, but I can't drop four car payments on a pair of boots I'm gonna wear four, maybe five times a year. So let's do this. Let's go to a boot store. Let's get an affordable pair of Western or work boot. Let's build our legging onto that. And you're gonna be amazed at the design possibilities here. We're gonna talk about those, but let's get the pattern nailed down first. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links there, it's gonna take you straight to our website. So let's step over here and look at a very simple pattern. And that's exactly right, simple it is. It may look complex, but it isn't. We really only need three measurements here. Let's jump over to a digital pick. So at the base, we're gonna measure the boot right in the middle of the ankle. We're gonna take that measurement minus one inch. So 14 minus one is 13 inches. At the top, let's come in just below the bend in our knee and measure the circumference of our leg there, our calf. For me, that's 14 inches. We're not gonna drop anything there. Height, middle of our ankle to just below the bend in our knee, for me, that's 14 inches. So therefore, there's our outside measurements, only three required. For our billets, all kinds of ways we can go here to connect, but let's keep it simple. We're gonna come in one inch from the edge on both sides. We're gonna come in one inch from the bottom, and then we're gonna give these a two inch spread. That's gonna give us seven billets each side. Up here, we've got a broken line. What we're going to do is extend our pattern four inches. We're gonna butt this up to the natural edge. So therefore, we're gonna fold that over. There's our flap. Now that's gonna give us a contrast. So we've got our sky or our flesh, and then our top grain. It's gonna look good. So let's jump over to our second digital pick. This is our tongue, technically a vamp, but let's go with tongue. So on this, you'll notice we've got an angled cut on each end. Well, that looks complicated. It really isn't. Let's just extend our pattern left. The angle is because we've got a taper. If we cut this straight, it's gonna come upward and it's not gonna fit well when we wrap this around. So easy enough right there on our billets. We've got a two and a half inch long by three quarter inch wide billet. We're gonna cut two on our main body. We're gonna cut one up, one down on our tongue over here. We're gonna have to cut 28 of these. Yeah, seven, 14 times two, 28. We're gonna make that super easy. Okay, so very simple pattern. Let's step over to our main table, cut some leather. We're gonna go with a brown for our leggings, but if you wanna go black, first off, timeless, classic. But notice here, the gloss, almost a perfect match to this boot. We've got a number of leathers that are gonna work for our black if we wanna go that way. But for our, our leggings, we're gonna go with a brown. A lot of different shades here. So what we're gonna do is use our water buffalo four to five ounce. I love this leather. It's got a little body to it. It's about a four to five ounce, but also distressed. So we can match a number of colors. And once that boot starts to take a little wear, it's gonna be almost identical. So with our pattern, we wanna hit a natural edge across our top. So let's take our main body. We're gonna cut two of these both up. So what we can do is lay this right into our natural edge. Now we're gonna mark this and we're gonna cut this, but let's try not to mark and cut across our top. I only say that because I've done that. So first off, let's mark two bodies and while they're down, I'm gonna mark for our billet holes. Okay, extremely easy to mark. I love this leather. So let's get a straight edge and let's cut these out. Okay, cuts nicely. New blade every time. Well, that's easy enough. We've got our two main bodies. Now let's jump over 
to our tongue. Now remember on these, we've got to cut one up and one down. Everything's cut, easy thus far. Now we're gonna jump over to our billets. We gotta do 28 of these. Well, we're thinking that's gonna take forever. Actually, no, it's not. And in fact, the second bonus there is we're gonna use up our piece of scrap. So our first step here, let's come in and off of this line, let's mark at three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna make a mark. Let's just mark that all the way across three quarters of an inch spread. Okay, let's see if we can get 28 out of this. Don't necessarily think we can, but at the same time, we can always come off of anywhere else on here. We're burning up scrap, but these are not right next to each other. So if they're not perfectly cut, we'll never see that. So let's cut these straps. And our last cut. Let's scoot these over. Let's push that down a little bit. Now we can take our square, starting to get a lot of debris going here. Yep, which is always the case. Let's drop that in right there at 20 inches. Let's take our square. I'm just gonna cut every one of these straps all at the same time. But what we wanna do, let's really press down on that square. Two and a half. And there we go, five already cut. Let's square these and continue on. And the last, there we go. Okay, so let's take out the pieces we can't use. Already five, 10, 15. You know what, there's 20 that fast. So I'm gonna jump over here and I'm simply gonna cut one or maybe two more straps and I'm gonna do the same thing. There we go. Now I've cut extra here just in case. Once in a while we'll have one like right there. I marked it. That's a little rough on the edge. But a couple of points. First off, we could make, we could cut our lace out of this. But we're going to need some pieces about 50 inches long. We've got plenty of room. But let's go with pre-spooled lace for that. Secondly, scrap. Notice how much leather we cut. There's our scrap pile. Well, that's not bad. That's about 1%. And last point. Really, all told, we could probably get another pair of leggings out of this piece of leather. That means each pair costs less than a tank of gas. So now we're gonna mark these. All we have to do, we could use a drill press, stack these up, but if we don't have one, let's just take these. We're gonna mark one in. Let's grab our revolving punch. Let's bend that over and punch it. So, easy enough. I'm gonna do, well, about 31 more. And our last billet. All told, that really took about three minutes. We've got a little more work to do on those, so let's set those aside. We're gonna to toss our scrap here momentarily. Not sure why I keep that on my table. But let's jump over to our main body. Now we're simply going to punch our billet holes on each side. And our last hole there. Okay, let's take our billets step over to our punch table. We're gonna drop in round end punches on these, make them look very professional. Speed is not necessarily what we're after, but if we can do the tedious parts quicker, makes the whole process more fun. Let's lay out six or eight of these across. We're gonna take our three quarter inch round end punch. Let's use our pinky so I can feel the end of my leather. And the last two. Okay, let's just flip these around and do the same thing on the other side. So therefore, we're moving through these pretty quickly again. And that's not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna do the balance just like that. Well, that's not bad. Again, about three minutes to knock those out. Well, I've got three here. Down towards the end of our strap, it may be a little bit wider. Well, we've got room. We made extras. So we'll toss those aside. 
Let's step back over to our main table and glue on our tongue because we're going to hand sew that. Now when we're laying in our tongues, this can be a little confusing. We're going to flip these over so we have a different texture there. It's going to match our flap. But what's going to happen here is we're going to go left and right. So if I lay that in, notice right here I'm coming straight across and then I come down at an angle. That piece actually needs to go on that side. Look at that. There we go. And this piece over here. So we're going to glue this on. Glue's great with leather. Leather's very porous. So we're simply going to use a white glue. But let's make this easy on ourselves. Let's make this easy to line up. So on this piece, let's drop in a line, scribe a line, just about a quarter of an inch in. Good. Now we know that we can line this up and we have an even distance all the way across. So with this, let's take a little glue and I'm just going to run down my edge. Now, we don't need a lot of glue here because we're simply gluing this long enough to get our chisel and a stitch line in. So let's turn that around, butt that to the end, and I'm going to come right up to that scribed line. Good. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other piece. Okay, we've got glue there. Let's butt to the bottom and to our line. There we go. We know we have a similar distance all the way down. So when we go to sew this, we've got room. Let's let these dry. Give them about maybe 10 minutes. We typically want to drop in a groove line to set our chisel line. Makes everything very clean and straight. The problem is on certain leathers that when we add a groove, well, it's very wide. So the risk here is that our chisel is going to waver back and forth. So let's take our straight edge and an awl. I'm going to come in about one eighth of an inch from my edge. We're not lining anything up here, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's take our awl and just lightly scribe a line. Look at that. Easy to see, very crisp. So what I'm going to do with our project, let's come in about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to start right at the top of our tongue and just lay in an awl line. There we go. We can certainly see that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other piece. Good. Let's step over to our punch table, drop in our chisel line. Let's go with an eighth inch flat chisel. It's one of my favorites, and we can really cover some ground here. Simple straight line, we'll use our six. But what I want to do is I want to start one tine outside of our tongue. So we'll start at the top, secure that down, then we'll hide our knot at the bottom. So let's come in right there. We've got a nice crisp line. Check to see if I have tines. I do. Okay, first tine, last hole. Good. Okay, I'm going to finish this line. And coming down to our end, that all, that gives us a nice line. In fact, that already looks good. So I'm going to drop in three in pre-existing holes. There we go. That works almost perfectly. Let's do the same thing to the other panel. Okay, we look good. Let's jump over to the other end of the table, drop in a quick stitch line. If you're new to sewing, your first thought is, you know what, this is going to take forever. Actually, it's not. I can sew about two and a half inches a minute. So 14 inches, a little over five minutes. Now with this, I'm going to clamp down my pony, C-clamp. Right here, I've just got a clip hanging from the rafters in my shop. So if you've got a big project or a long project, that's going to flop around on us. We can simply drop in a clip that's going to hold that secure, but at the same time, it's going to keep that taut. Now, with our thread, we're going to use the Ritza. This is the 0.8 millimeter. Love it. It's a great thread. Just a simple brown. It's going to match nicely. John James needles, the number 18. It's a perfect sewing needle. Best hand sewing needle out there. So up here, let's start. We're going to do a saddler stitch. Now, typically, one needle first hole. But what we want to do here, let's secure this little flap down. So let's come into our second hole, equalize out. Now I'm going to use about three times my length in thread. So let's drop that in. Let's come back to our first hole. Can we see that? There we go. Let's come back to the first hole. Two needles, one time. Let's bring that through. 
and give that a little tug. Let's equal out our thread, make sure we've got good equal length on either side. Now I'm going to start sewing. So I'll open up with my left, make an X, move my thumb and my first, my first finger from the eye to the tip, to the point, and we can pull that through. So we've got one stitch. Let's keep moving in the same manner. Now, as we're sewing along, a good tip here is I don't want to fish for my hole. First off, that's going to scratch just about any leather. But if we think about it, we chiseled from the top. So therefore, this top hole, it's more funnel shaped. So if I lead from the top, open that hole up, my back needle is simply going to fall right in and we're not damaging our leather. But we can move along pretty quick. One thing we don't want to do is pull so hard on each thread or each stitch that we start to ripple. Bodies, the leather's got some good body here, so we're not really worried about that. But at the same time, if we really crank that down, that's going to ripple on us. And we're down to our last three holes. In fact, I'm not even sure that was five minutes. So the one thing that we think is going to be the most tedious really isn't. So now what we're going to do, we've got one hole left. Let's take this out of our pony, drop this down to our table because we're going to bring one needle through the tongue, one needle through the main body, tie a square knot, and our knot is totally hidden. So with this, one needle, we can pop that glue, just a white glue. Let's bring that needle through our tongue, front needle through our panel. There we go. Okay, let's tighten that down. Let's crank that good. So with a square knot, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right needle, I'm going to go over my left and circle around. Let's draw that in good and tight. There we go. Now, left needle over right, circle around, and there we go. Our knot is hidden. We can crank down on that. That looks good. So with, when we trim this, one trick, let's take our needles. Now, what I'm going to do, I never use this part of my blade. So let's take our knife, hold it next to the thread, and pull the thread across that. There, that way we never cut into our leather. Okay, looks good. So let's, I'm going to step over to the other side, then let's hammer down our stitch line because we are almost done. And left over right. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Let's trim this off. Very nice. Let's step over to our quartz. Hammering down a stitch line on our chrome tan is not going to have the same effect as a veg tan, but nonetheless, it's going to spread out our thread a little bit, close those holes, make it look much more consistent. Very good. I'm going to reset here. Let's drop in some rivets, and we are done with these beautiful leggings. We're going to set rivets. We're going to use double caps. Hard part here picking out which finish is going to be the most beautiful because I want to use every one of these. But let's go with an antique nickel. Now, this looks like it could be tedious, but let's do this. Let's drop in all of our posts, then we'll drop in all of our billets, drop in all of our caps, and then we'll set one after another. This will go pretty fast. But also, good point here, we punched a smaller hole. So notice our rivet, it's a little bit tight or a little bit snug in there. So it's not rolling around on my table while I try to set these. That's frustrating. But with this, going this route, we can set these in no time at all. So now let's take a billet, fold that over. We're going to put the loop towards the edge, and let's drop in a cap. Nice thing about double caps, there's a little crimp in the post. So therefore, I can snap that down without setting it. And our last billet. Notice how those are lining up. We used our pattern, we took our time. That looks very good. All right, let's set these one at a time. That looks good, and it's a very secure closure. All right, I'm gonna do that on the other three lines. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Now, one point. I've got three here. Holes a little bit off on this one. Right here, I cut past where I marked it with my knife. No issue. We've got extras, so we don't have to back up. All right, let's step over to our main table, drop in some lace. 
We're gonna go with our pre-spooled latigo lace. Plenty of length, plenty of strength. So let's fold our flap over, press that down. There we go, okay. All kinds of creative ways we can go here, and we're gonna look at that in just a minute. But let's just lace these in a simple fashion. I'm gonna start at, my, at the bottom and work my way up. So if we have extra lace, that's gonna hang at the top and not the bottom, which would be a problem. So down here, let's just push that through. Let's come through on the other side, same thing. Equalize that out. And now let's just crisscross every other back and forth. Okay, there we go. That looks good, doesn't it? Let's put this on our pair of boots. The cool thing here is that we can take our lace and we can put this in the front, on the inside, on the outside, or even the back. But look at that, doesn't that look good? Now, we've got a little difference in color here. That's gonna work in as these wear, that'll look much nicer. But also, if we drop in something like a boot strap, spur strap, that's gonna hide that segue even a little bit more, make the boots look like they were made that way. All right, we have got some design options on every step. So let's take a look at those. I'm gonna reset here. Let's see how we can dress these up some. We can decorate every aspect of our leggings. In fact, I'm gonna do my best not to roll here, but this is funny. I actually created a list so I can remember everything we can do with these, and that's just scratching the surface. So take any or every bit of this and run with it, okay? First off, we cut our pattern just like we did for our leggings, but on our flap, let's drop in an English point. That's very cool. A very simple design, but it makes it very period. Let's do this. Let's drop in maybe some spots. Now hold this flat. Spots or rivets. Maybe we offset these. There we go. That makes a cool design. Very nice, very unique touch. Now, let's go all the way out. Right here on our quiver, we've done a video on this. But notice we've got an English point. Then we've got three descending size round holes. Drop a spot in there. Doesn't that look unique? Okay, that's our flap for the most part if we leave it on. Let's take this off and hand sew on. How about some suede? We've got some beautiful colors of suede or maybe rabbit. That would make a very cool, very rustic pair of leggings. Or if we want to go a little bit further, we've got some beautiful reptile. Look at that. Is that not cool? Okay, so that's just the flap. Now, let's do this. Let's move over to the tongue because there's a couple of ways we can go there. On our tongue, we probably want to stay a little bit more simple, but nonetheless, let's just say we're going to use our suede for our flap. Well, let's use that same suede for the tongue. That would tie in nicely. Now, suede wouldn't be my first choice for our billets, but the idea still stands. If we're using a different leather for both our flap and our tongue, let's use that right there. Say we're gonna use a brown body, maybe drop in a black flap, tongue, and billets. That would look very cool on our billets. A number of ways we can go here. So right off the bat, maybe let's just connect those with a concho. We've got some gorgeous conchos, or take that a step further. Let's run that billet all the way across. Maybe drop in some rivets, conchos, or spots there. That would be very unique, have a line across seven lines across going down now on our billets we haven't even gotten to closures yet yeah we're we're just getting started but let's do this bottom edge we could always cut this bottom edge to actually match the boot panel so that would be even a closer line right there but also how about our english point or maybe some fringe on that just a little extra decoration there okay let's move over to closures one creative way to go here is to use conchos. So what I can do is drop one line of billets and I can drop in a concho offset to the other line. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna drop in a lace. We'll start right here, we'll lace, lace through our billet around a concho, billet, concho, billet, concho. So therefore, all we have to do is lift our lace off of the concho and it's an easy in, easy out. 
But at the same time, is that not beautiful? We've got all kinds of gorgeous conchos at Weaver. Now, buckles, absolutely. Seven buckles, that's an antique copper heel bar. Seven buckles would look spectacular. Or we can always work it to where our buckles are on our main body. One single line, or maybe we could offset those as they rise. Now, maybe a little hard to get in and out of, but nonetheless, a very creative idea. Last idea. Now, I hate to even bring these out because this, this is actually for my costume. I wear these with my armor. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that. There we go. So they're 20 years old. They're looking a little rough. You know what? They're 20 years old. They're still going. But notice I've got a billet and just a simple hook. So yet again, another creative way we can go. Now let's jump over to our main body. On our main body, unlimited possibilities. First off, we could always simply sew in some kind of a design with a beautiful thread. How about a Mexican basket weave across there? That would be beautiful. Maybe some edge lacing across the bottom of our main panel. Here's a good one. How about we do a filigree cut? make some kind of a cool design, that would be beautiful, but then let's add some spots in on top of that. Or again, we can simply go, I just always like the offset design, drop in some rivets, again, or spots. That would look very cool. I know I can't stop here. So let's just add a few more. There we go. Wow, that would look very, very nice, particularly with that antique nickel. And one more. Yeah, I know, I keep rolling here. But how about we drop some tassels, maybe across the bottom of our flap, or middle, or even the top of our flap, or even across the body. Unlimited possibilities in design on this simple project. To me, this is one of the best leather craft projects for a number of reasons, and I'm gonna stop talking here shortly. But first off, the pattern, relatively simple. A couple of easy measurements. The construction, well, no problem at all. In fact, these are hand sewn, about 10 minutes at most. Design options, well, we've been over those. But the last great point, this is not a project that we're gonna sit on a shelf or put on a wall and we'll look at it as we walk by. This is a project that we're gonna use, wear, and love for years to come. So I hope you pick just the right design for your leggings. I hope they come out beautiful and I hope you love wearing them. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.